Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Jonathan Bellinger, founder of Mando Montreal. Today, I'm going to demonstrate that by changing the strings and setting up the bridge and the intonation, you can get the best sound out of your mandolin. Usually, on the market, you can easily find a mandolin like this. Either it's a factory made or it's a used one you found on Kijiji for a low price. Uh, they're pretty easy to find. They all lack the same problem. They have bad strings and they have uh, bad, bad uh, bridge position. So this have, has to be fixed and set up in order to have a decent sound. The first thing you, sh you have to check for adjusting intonation is uh, how it re reacts at the 12th fret. Usually playing the open string followed by the 12th fret will give you an accurate one octave higher pitch. In this case I have already adjusted it a couple of years ago. It's mostly Oh, this one is a little bit flat. You also want to check uh, what's happening at the 7th fret. It's also a really important area where usually you will have your 4th finger playing either your, the open string. So you want to get, you want to really have this note here in tune with the open string. So, not bad. Again, it's a little flat here. The next thing you want to check is if you have string buzz. Sometimes if the action is set too low, it's going to result into buzzing sound. Otherwise, if the action is too high, then it's going to end up being very difficult to play here. So you kind of want to have the best of what you can do. Even though we're not going to have a straight neck, okay, because we're dealing with an instrument, a factory instrument. But I want still to have the best that I can of this instrument. So, you see that in first position, it's pretty good. I don't have... minor buzz here. So I still have some adjustment to do here. I could go a little bit deeper uh, in the bridge position. Another thing you can check, this is a little bit more advanced but I know my mandolin has this problem so I'm gonna show it to you, is the um, position of the bridge on the table. On the camera you cannot see but if I take this very small paper and I bring it under here you can see that I actually have some, there's a gap, okay? It's not touching. In some areas, my bridge is not completely flat with the soundboard. So, even if it were a expensive spruce soundboard or is a plywood soundboard, it just doesn't make sense that this bridge is not properly sitting there. So I'm gonna have to do some, some little sanding there. So what I will do is I will take a pencil and I will just draw a little bit exactly where I have to sand it down, you know. And by marking these areas, which are touching, yeah, then I know a little bit where I have to sand when I will take it off. Once you've decided that either your, your mandolin bridge has to go up or down, then it's time to take off the strings and adjust the screws here to set the position. But we will discuss that later in the video. Right now my mandolin is to its maximum here and it can go lower, so it needs some carpentry. So let's go to my workshop. Because I've determined exactly which spot on my bridge I need to work on, I can easily take some paper and file it down smoothly. I use a straight surface because I don't want to end up being around and I want it to be sitting on my mandolin really straight. For the very last part I put it a really fine paper on the table and making it smooth and really even. Then 
Taking off some material out of the top part will help me to get the bridge lower. Now I can adjust the screws and I'm ready to go. So we're back into the studio and uh, I've worked on my bridge and I'm pretty satisfied with the job I did. So I took off all the old strings and I went shopping for new ones. And I just wanted to show you uh, what I found. I, I was looking for something standard and cheap. So I chose the M400 Martin mandolin strings. This is a 8020 bronze uh, type of string, which I prefer. And what I was looking for actually is the size of each string. So you want to aim for a standard uh, 0 0.010 for the E strings and uh, 0.034 for the G string. So this is a, a good uh, tension for, uh, for the mandolin. Anywhere from that you can change, but this is a standard. So I'm gonna put the strings on and show you some more tips. So what I'm going to show you now is the correct way to attach the string. So what you wanna do is make a loop here like this. I'm gonna try to do it up. Yeah, once I have the loop like this, I can go like this, and this way the string is locked. And now I can turn it up like this. So as you can see, I've rolled the string from top to bottom, and then rolling on this. Now that I've put the G string, I'm gonna continue and put the other strings but I will just put one of the two pairs of each. So putting the first G, I will take the string that is closer to me. Then after I will put the D that is also closer to me. Then the A, I'm going to put the A that is further to me. And then I will do the same for the E string and put the E that is further to me. This way I will be able to work on my bridge position. So let's put the strings and check this out. What you need to understand is when you play at the 12th fret, you're actually dividing the string into two parts. So if I have the open string sounding A440, then by pressing here, I should have the exact octave. In this case, it shows a little bit lower. So because it's a little bit lower, it means that this part here is longer than this part here. So I would need to bring it back a little bit. There you go. Again, you have to check also at the 7th fret. So if I compare with the open E, and I check my E here, which is right on, you see? So now that I've tuned the mandolin, I tuned the bridge, I've set it everything into my taste. So I'm just gonna do a quick check. Usually I play scales. I check with octaves. I can also verify the open string at the 7th fret. And I play some scales. So I'm satisfied. I'm just gonna put back all the strings and let's see what it does. So that's it. I've put all the strings. I've tuned the mandolin. I'm pretty satisfied. The only thing I had to do is raise a little bit, like maybe a quarter of a turn here. I had some buzz on the first string, but uh, frets are old, so you know, you always try to get the, be the best out of what you have. So if you have any question, you can always reach me at mendomontreal.com. My name is Jonathan Bellinger, and I'm really happy that you've watched this video, and maybe I can help you uh, further in your mandolin playing. So, have a nice day.